The Nigeria president, Bola Ahmed Tumubu, is begging Nigerian medical practitioner like the doctors and the nurses to please come back to Nigeria. Begging them to please come back to Nigeria to sacrifice their time, their money to come back to Nigeria to serve their fatherland. And according to our president, he said, we encourage those Nigeria health professionals in diaspora, just like Professor Ali Pate and Tujin Aulusa have done to sacrifice their time to come back home and serve their people. Consider your contribution here at home. As we say, charity begins at home. For the developed country who benefit from amazing talents of Nigeria health workers, we really encourage them to consider how to support the expansion of training facility in Nigeria to replace those that have recruited from here. We should also look at the short and long-term opportunities that we offer. Over 5,000 medical doctors in Nigeria have migrated to UK and US, United Arab Emirates, and other Africa countries. And our Nigeria president, Bola Ahmed Tunubu, is begging Nigerians to come back, Nigeria medical practitioners, to come back home to serve their fatherland. But they are always ignoring the fact, ignoring the reasons why Nigerian medical practitioners are traveling abroad. Why don't you start yourself, this uh, Mr. President and these politicians? You said charity begins at home. Why don't you stay at home and treat yourself? You do not need to travel. The same thing our former President Bola Ahmed Tunubu said, uh, uh, President, uh, our former president, Mohamed Bouhari, said the other time, while he was in power, said, our medical doctors should call back home. And meanwhile, whenever you want to treat yourself, you are traveling abroad to treat yourself. And then this one said, charity begins at home. So when it comes to politicians, that charity begins at home doesn't uh, apply, Abi. But when it comes to ordinary citizens who are hustling themselves, who are trying to find a better opportunity for themselves, Charity begins at home applies to them. <laughs> Why don't you address the low pay? Why don't you address the benefit? Why don't you address so many other things? Me, myself, I'm not happy that our medical doctors, nurses are traveling abroad. But if I'm in their shoes, I may definitely going to do the same because I need better life for myself. I need better opportunity. I need better facility to work. I need better trust. For myself because have you ever been to a nigeria hospital have you seen the nurses faces the doctor faces they are usually not happy they are always usually not happy they are always sad hungry that's the reason why when you uh, ask a nurse please where is this uh, so 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 what do you say about the medication they will tell you please I told you this before. I told you this before. Sometimes it's not their fault because of the situation. It's because of the working environment. Please, President Mohamed Bari, we have a lot of issue in our medical uh, fac, uh, medical industry, if, if I may use that word. Please deal with it first. Attract people. Don't force people to come. Attract them. Let the economy attract them. The same way uh, the diaspora countries are attract, attracting doctors, let the economy attract them. Well, that being said, there is this man, Jamel Ezubike, who is an international student in the United States of America from Nigeria, Anambra State, precisely. This guy has landed himself in big trouble, although he's not a froster. I'm so, so happy about that. He wasn't arrested based on fraud or do anything illegal. What I what I uh, what I believe what he did absolutely okay to me absolutely okay because as Nigerians Nigerians and Nigeria culture they are polygamous in nature. 
the men in Nigeria, according to their culture, they are polygamous in nature. Forget about Christianity, forget about uh, Muslim. When you go down into the South South, the East, you will find men who are Christian marrying five wives. Yes, yes, they are not Muslim. So forget Islam, forget Christianity. Nigeria culture, tradition, allow men to be polygamous in nature. Let us get that factory uh, straight. So Jamel Ezu became an international student with a student uh, visa to the United States of America to study something related to women's security, decided because it was kind of like close to the women's security, the police women, and so many other security agencies in USA uh, that has to do with women. He took the opportunity to impregnate, to impregnate not one, but four police women. The United States of America police women. This man impregnated the four of them. So it was all discovered after one of the pregnant women, the police woman, was trying to investigate in Zubike. And she later discovered that, ah, it's not only her that was pregnant for Zubike. They have other four three women, including her, that are pregnant for Zubike. So she immediately decided to report the case to the authority, and Zubike was arrested. And if found guilty, is going to be deported. Why are you going to deport Zubike? What has Zubike done? Zubike was in a relationship with more than one woman, which is not a crime in the United States of America. And they were banking without a uh, protection. Is the Zubike the one that produced kids? Why is the Zubike liable for everything now? As if he is God, he is the one that implants kids. He always was enjoying himself. Those women too were also enjoying themselves. Yeah. They were enjoying each other. So how come a Zubike is the one liable for pregnancy when he was simply enjoying himself? Can someone, can someone, I'm still at this question, can some, can a man purposely impregnate a woman? Is that possible? For a man to purposely impregnate a woman is not possible in my book. A man cannot purposely impregnate a woman because a woman knows her system. She knows what to take. She knows how to protect herself. So a woman, huh, they are the one that can detect if they can get pregnant or not. So Zubike should be allowed to continue his studies and those women should be liable to taking care of all those kids. And if Zubike wish to be part of their life, good and fine. Zubike should not be held responsible for anything because he has done absolutely nothing wrong. Honestly, that's how I feel. So you guys, please let Zubike rest. Let him breathe. He has done absolutely, absolutely nothing wrong at all. Zubike should be freed. In fact, Zubike should be allowed to continue his study without fear of being deported or anything. Or who li liable for anything. Every page has supported. Because those women, they knew exactly what they were doing. Those women knew exactly what they were doing. He's not liable for anything. He shouldn't be found guilty. He's, he's a free. He has done nothing wrong, not fraud, not kidnapping, not forcefully forcing himself on those women. They enjoyed it and they enjoyed themselves. They decided to get pregnant. There are so many products online, products in the, in, in, in the chemist, pharmacy that you can take, prescription from doctors that you can take to prevent, to prevent yourself from getting pregnant, but they refuse. Those women are matured women, employed. So, of course, there should be some setting and rules, police rules. So, please, his application be free. He has done absolutely nothing wrong. I'm going to advocate for him, in fact. So, let's talk about Bob Risky. Bob Risky was, uh, was attending a party recently, and one of the organizers, or I do not know, mistakenly called Bob Risky a man. <laughs> that Bob Risky provoked. But risky provoke. How could you? Can you be calling me a man? Yeah, 
You walk. <laughs> Wahala. Okay, I don't know. That is the narration. No, say person call a man. No, but if that is the case, eh? Not everybody is delusional. Not everybody is insane. Not everybody that can see a white book and call it a red book. Uh -uh. If you are in denial, if you have decided to call black red, good and fine to you. If I see a red book, I will call that book a red book. If I say a black book, I will call that book a black book or a white book. Why is it that you're going to enforce your belief on me? Why don't you believe your belief on me? Believe my belief. I can decide to call you what I have seen you, what I have seen. <laughs> they say respect people's uh, decision. But why don't you also respect my own decision as well? Why don't you respect my own decision? You are telling a grown-up person to forget the teachings of his father, of his, of, uh, of his mom, of her mom or her dad. Uh, a way of life. You are telling that person to overlook over the years that he has. He was giving birth, grew up to become who she is or who he is. You are telling that person to forget those things that he was taught. That you now have your own, your new thought. I want to implant it on everybody. Is that not mental slavery? Are you not oppressing me so? Is that not oppression? Let's be honest. Is that not you oppressing me? That is oppression to the highest order. That is mental slavery. You are twisting my brain. You are making me confused. My brothers and sisters, can you honestly tell me what that means? Yeah.